Okay, so hello and welcome to uh, some sample problems for the SAT2 physics subject questions. Uh, I'm going to be going through about 15-20 problems um, uh, from a sample, sample test. Okay, so um, this is uh, problem one. Um, and so in problem one, we have Actually, problems one and two relate to the same uh, the same drawing. Okay, so in this situation, we have a we have like a, a rope or string with a mass m attached to it that goes from like this extreme position and swings along out to this other extreme position. So it's going back and forth. It's a, a um, it's a simple pendulum. Okay, so you have a bunch of uh, categories. You have A for acceleration. You have B is the kinetic energy. You have C, the mass. Uh, D is the potential energy. And then finally, we have E is the velocity. Okay. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to do something kind of cool here. I'm going to change this to problem one. Okay. So problem one asks, which property? So they're, they're gonna. The problem is like it states all these like care, these these properties. The problem one asks which property remains constant throughout the motion of the sphere. So um, this this sphere is going is pivoting. It's attached firmly to this position here, and it's swinging back and forth, going like that. Okay. So um, let's just go through each of these. So the acceleration. Well, let's see. I, well, let's let's just skip that. That one might be, you know, maybe it will be or maybe not. But kinetic energy. Well, at this position, at the extreme position, it actually stops and has to turn around. It comes along, speeds up, speeds up, and it, it's actually going very fast here. And then it comes all the way here and stops. So the kinetic energy relates to how much motional energy the object has. So it can't be that. So we have A, B, C, D, E. So it can't be the kinetic energy. Mass, well, that actually seems like a really good candidate. Um, so let's, let's think about that. Um, potential energy, well, when it's, uh, this is a normal pendulum swinging back and forth in the influence, under the influence of gravity. So when I'm at the very bottom, I probably have less potential energy than when I'm at the top. When I'm at the top, I have the ability, I have the potential to actually uh, convert that energy into some other form, namely the kinetic and when it's at the bottom. So potential energy also doesn't seem like a very good candidate. And then also velocity, we just saw that, you know, it swings here, it's, you know, it's, it's swinging up to here, it stops, turns around, goes back, starts swinging very fast in this direction, comes here, stops, turns around, goes back, so velocity is not a good candidate. And the fact that it, it's actually changing direction, its velocity is changing, must imply that it has to be accelerating because it's, it's constantly, if, if there was no acceleration, it would never change. It's just like a, a car going down a road and just going straight forever and not changing. So it, it's undergoing some acceleration. So indeed, the mass sounds like the most logical answer. Okay, so problem two uh, is which property goes to zero and changes directions at each extreme position Q. So you have to have a property which changes direction. So that's actually really important. Uh, which, so the question is which changes direction? Okay, and also it has to go to zero, goes to zero at Q. So interestingly, we just talked about each of these properties, and I think it's this is a really important point, but this property has to have a direction. 
So energy, mass, energy, these are properties which are just a number. There's no such thing as like uh, the direction of the energy. It's like you have you have this much energy, this many joules of, of kinetic energy, um, or, or, you, or you have no kinetic energy. It's like it, it's a scalar quantity. So scalar means uh, it's, just, it's just a number representing it. So it's not going to be any of the ones that are scalars. Similarly, potential energy is a scalar. Uh, mass, well, that's also scalar. It's just like a number that you have. So now, now we've eliminated all the scalar quantities. So which changes direction? And which one goes to zero at Q? Well, interestingly, we just talked about the velocity at this point. It, the, the, the mass comes to a stop, turns around, and goes back. Goes all the way to the other side, comes to a stop, and goes back. So, indeed, the velocity goes to zero at Q, and it does change direction. So that seems to be pretty good. So E seems like a really good choice. Why couldn't it be the acceleration? Well, we do know that the velocity does stop there. So if at that point the acceleration also stopped, then the ball, the mass would actually just not do anything. If there is no acceleration, um, then the, the, the object would just stay there and stop. So you don't ever have a pendulum that just like stops in midair. So acceleration doesn't work. Um, so, so indeed, it has to be um, the, the velocity. Okay. Um, so in the next uh, the next uh, video series, we'll have uh, the next set of problems.